On the last video, I told you about forehead brow lift. On the face, not just the forehead and brow sag, but the entire face becomes droopy. As you already know, areas under the eyes and cheekbones, as well as cheeks sag downwards, causing the jawline to bulge or become bumpy in appearance, and neck becomes sagged and wrinkled as well. Generally during facelift, i.e. full facelift, neck lift must be performed at the same time. These days, many people know about lifting surgeries using threads or golden threads, but based on my experience, surgery using thread or golden thread to lift is absolutely ineffective. Not only that, recently minimal incision method and minimal facelift are being performed and this surgery incises in front of the ear only up to here. Even I used this surgical method in the past, but I abandoned it after 2005. The reason is because this method only lifts the unnecessary cheek areas and had rather limited effectiveness on essential jawlines and neck. Therefore, after 2005, I not only used minimal incision method with incision in front of the ear, but also incision line is extended behind the ear in order to perform facelift and neck lift simultaneously and place the focus on jawline and neck. The reason because minimal incision method or surgery using threads is ineffective is due to fixating tissues similar to ligaments between the deep and shallow tissues on the face. As you can see, here is the fixating tissue and next to the zygomatic bone and then there is the mesector muscle. Since there are ligament-like structures in front of the mesector muscle, in front and back of the ear, in the round mouth corners. Unless these tissues are cut, it's difficult to fixate the skin permanently like this. Usually after surgery, it seems to be lifted like this, but unless these ligament structures are cut, it will quickly move down again. Therefore, the surgical method of our clinic is called deep plane dissection and it cuts all these ligament tissues. The most important point of facelift and neck lift is clear and distinct jawline and next important area is the neckline. For the neck, in order to create good neckline, skin must be pulled well behind the ear. Jawline requires surgery, which pulls from in front and inside the earlobe, and most people start to sag like a pug around this area with age, and this area is removed simultaneously with liposuction. Deep plane facelift, which I perform, mainly concerns the smas layer on the overall face, it means that there is a smas layer under the skin which can be thought of as a membrane layer and surgery is dissecting under this membrane then finally pulling and fixating skin. This area would be the mandibular angle. Then lines are connected to the lateral eye corners and dissection is under the skin only up to this point. This area would be the jawline, and this area will be where neckline is pulled back. Therefore, in the case of extremely low sideburns, then incision line is made inside the scalp, and in the case of short sideburns, incision is made right below them. Then incision made in front of the earlobe, and behind the ear, and then back to the earlobe, is the minimal incision facelift surgery which had been used in the past. As I mentioned before, minimal incision facelift has the great disadvantage of poorly correcting jawline and neck. I believe jawline and neck are the most important areas for Koreans. Then the incision is elongated behind the ear. Incision is made along the crease behind the ear and around the area where inner earlobe splits. 
Incision line extends naturally into the hairline. Incision behind the ear and inside the hairline can pull back the jawline and neck later. Therefore, during the surgery, up to this point, incision is made under the subcutaneous fat, i.e. under the skin, and from here it's dissected under the deep mass layer. After dissection, liposuction is simultaneously performed on these sagged areas and for the fixation, skin is pulled towards this direction. Skin must be pulled towards the direction of the chin line in order to create smooth and clean jawline. Same goes for the neckline. In order to create neck and jawline, skin must be pulled like this. Then finally, skin is fixated on this area to make it perpendicular to the wrinkles around the mouth or to the direction of mouth corners. This will be the normal surgical procedure and method of facelift. I already told you that the integral part of this surgery is not pulling the skin and instead dissecting under the fascia and once dissection is done then pulling the fascia and fixating it. All these procedures are ultimately part of the process for properly fixating the fascia layer. Once the fascia layer is fixated, it lifts upwards. Then some skin is left over and this is removed. Core point of this surgery is, instead of pulling the skin, fascia is lifted and excess skin is removed. Same goes for the neck. I've already told you that on the face, smas layer is pulled and on the neck there is the platysma muscle. This muscle is pulled and excess skin is simply removed. Also, as people age, neck bends form, and correction for patients like this is incising under the skin and gathering and suturing these bends together. Then, there are some people with high fat deposit inside the chin. If there are excessively accumulated fat in here, then liposuction must be performed as well. Like the neck surgery, if chin is too small, then jaw sags quickly. Therefore, in the case of small chin, fat injection on chin, or for some extreme cases, implant is used to project the chin forward. The most important area of neck surgery is pulling the neck muscle and fixating this part and in the case of excessive fat under the chin, liposuction is performed at the same time, and in the case of bend formation on neck, bend muscles are gathered and sutured together, and size of the chin must be considered as well. Small jaw must project forward in order to create natural and clean jawline and neck. Thank you.